Welcome to the Inspired Action Podcast. This is where we have motivational, inspiring conversations and interviews that we hope you'll enjoy listening to. Join us and other inspired actioneers on this alchemical, transformational journey. Welcome back to the Inspired Action Podcast. I'm Jay, and this is our 103rd, that's 103 of the Inspired Action Podcast. And I'm here, as always, with Lita Herman, the wonderful co host. <laughs> Welcome back, Inspired Actioneers. It's so great to have you join us again today. And we're eager to continue our topic on how to heal heart pain and specifically how each of the five elements deals with heart pains. And guess what? Today we're going to talk about wood. Your favorite topic. Yes. As you all know, we kind of have a habit of starting with the best. Well, now, Lita, even though wood is obviously the best, we don't have to actually say that. (laughs) But you didn't let me finish my sentence. We start with the best and then we save the best Ah, for last. (laughs) Which in this case would be water. I see how you did that. You tricked me. (laughs) But because each element is actually the best element, you know, we need all five elements equally in the world to make the world go around. Right. It's like kind of how the ecosystem and the seasons actually work. Without winter, there'll be no spring, which is wood. Right. right? And without spring, there'll be no summer, which which is is fire. fire. Yes. No north, there'd be no south. Yeah, even the directions. Without the four directions, there's no center, which is the earth and direction. all the transitions between the seasons, which is also earth. Yes, so we can go on and on and on. But before we get into wood and their common heart pains, let's tell them about our discovery, Jay. Sure. The other day, we had a Celine Dion moment. For those of you who don't know, she's a Canadian singer. Like, who doesn't know, like Celine Dion, right? <laughs> so, well, actually, Lita didn't really know a lot about her. And she was in the news not too long ago, like last week or so, about this. Her, She has this condition called the stiff person syndrome. So Lita and I started a conversation about what we think her elements were. And that just led us down the Celine Dion rabbit hole of elementally nerdy stuff for like a couple of hours. Which happens to us regularly. Yeah, it it certainly does, you know. (laughs) And we're pretty sure we know her top elements. Should we tell everyone? No, let's let them figure that out for <laughs> okay. themselves. All no, right. of course we're going to tell them. <laughs> all right, all right. You're I don't so... want to. I don't want to be mean. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know you can't keep a secret. No, I know you can't. Keep a secret. <laughs> okay, but and then we can kind of like talk about how funny the wood theory. How just one thing led to another, and then you know we found this video, and we're going to get to that in a little bit too. Okay, but first. All right, let's talk. You want to talk about the vague, the elephant in the room? Yes. Okay, so we uh, while we were doing Celine Dion, and uh, we were just kind of watching videos and doing the stuff. She did this thing. I think it was New York City, and she was walking down a sidewalk, waiting for walking towards photographers, and she had what looked like a cape on. Yes, like it almost looked like a poncho. Yes, and then we're like, oh my god, is she wearing a poncho? How could that be? She, the Earth could fall off its axis and and like just spin out of control. And when they, as she gets close, she comes up and she flips the sides back and takes a wood stance, and it's not a poncho. No, it's. it's- what do you want to you say? say? It's it, a cape. It's a cape, and it's the most exquisite cape you've it's ever like seen. It's like a superhero, fashionista, perfect tweed cape poncho thing. It's like <laughs> a cape for sure. You it's ha- the wood version of a poncho, yes. everyone out there who wants to tease me. But yes. make no mistake, it is not a poncho. <laughs> it is a cape, and that is very different. Because yeah, when you're... You- when you're wearing a cape, it's like, you know, you get to make that superhero oh, stance. Oh, yeah. She and did for sure. She did it. She did it perfectly. We're going to put it in the show notes so you guys could see the video. And she had her legs shoulder width apart, her hands on her hips, and the cape came out at the sides where the elbows come out. Yeah, it you know. was really, really funny. So then we're, we're like laughing and we're go- going down the rabbit hole some more. And so we go to our other, one of our other favorite wood singers, Lady Gaga. Who, who was talking a lot, she talks a lot about fashion. And remember, this was all on the same day, which was a really long day. And then she had, I'll let you do the quote, Lita. This is from Lady Gaga about her relationship with fashion. She said, I have a special relationship with fashion. For me, it's like a superhero cape. It gives me wings to fly. And it's so like, <laughs> we were just like, what did she say? It's like so unbelievable that we found the queen of wood singers talking about wearing a superhero cape on the new queen of wood singers. We can't make this stuff up. No, we just can't make it up. So I guess we kind of said it there, Lita. We we're happy to put Selena in the wood lineup of singers that also include Lady Gaga, Pink, Madonna, Florence of Florence and the Machine, and we could just so many more. And I just want to point out to some listeners, Lita, that these are just our thoughts and they're not always correct. Sometimes we find more data, more video, more info that may or may not 
change our guesstimates of someone's else, someone's elemental stack up. Especially when you're looking at celebrities, politicians, famous people, stuff like that. Yeah, because often when they're in public, they're not being their authentic selves. So we have we have a way of, you know, we watch them in different settings. We try not to always see them performing, and that helps us. But anyway, we had a really great time. It was fun. And Lita also got to watch for the first time. Titanic. Titanic. <laughs> she could literally have been the last person over the age of 40 who had not seen that movie and didn't really know the song. <laughs> right. What song is it, Lita? The Celine Dion song. My, My heart. No, 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 don't, don't, don't. <laughs> I can't allow you to sing it because that could cause an uprising in Canada. I'm pretty sure the Canadian Mounties were created to come after people who do really bad Celine Dion impersonations. Okay. So we do not want to upset our family up north, the Canadians, because it's a real thing. Like, they do not like you singing bad Celine Dion. All right. Well, the song's called My Heart Will Go On and On. Google it and just or watch the movie Titanic. I mean, it won, like, the Oscars for the best song. And it was just, it was just. A really beautiful song for but that particular movie. It's the perfect song for today because this is the topic of this podcast Absolutely. episode. It's about your heart and healing your heart. So your heart in a good wood way, you just have to go on and on. But wait, before we do that, like this is a long intro. We're so sorry. We really need to do our quick review before we start with the wood. Yes. Stuff. Right. Well, obviously, today we're continuing our elemental series on how to heal the tentacles that wrap around your heart when you have heart pain. So, this episode and the next four episodes are about how each elemental type responds differently to trauma and negative life events. And then what we can do to release those quote unquote tentacles. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And for anyone who's not yet familiar with our Alchemy Learning Center, we have a lot going on there. As always, it's growing, growing, growing. We're so grateful. We have a bunch of new continuing ed. I guess, do they still call them credits? Yes, CEUs. Yes, CEUs for our classes. So if you're an acupuncture, a body worker, Anyone who needs that, you can check it out because we offer a lot of that at the ALC, as we call it. Yes. And we're getting ready for our retreat in February. Which is sold out. Donut. We're full. Yes. We're, 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 <laughs> we're not really doing that like in yeah. more slots. But thank you, for everyone, if you did write to us. But let us know if you want to come to our next one. Yes, which we don't know where it will be yet. But yes. It'll be someplace fun. So, all right. On that great note. Yes. Let's go back to our program. Okay. Our podcast. All right. So in our last episode, pod 102, we talked about the tentacles that wrap around your heart and cause heart pains. And sometimes we liken them to- We like to liken them. We like to liken them. <laughs> but don't get confused with liken. All right. So we like to liken them to the seven deadly sins. Yes, the seven deadly sins, because they really match up well. In case you don't remember or know, and they are... Drum roll, please. I don't have special effects today, so just in your mind. <laughs> Overindulgence, temptation, greed, jealousy, ego slash pride, deep-seated anger, and apathy. And because this is our podcast and we can do whatever the heck we want, we added an eighth tentacle. Yes. Which is fear. Fear. Because fear can be healthy and help keep us safe. In a good way, air quotes. Right. Or it can be debilitating and keep us frozen. Not in a good way, air quotes. It's like watching the new Volcano movie on Netflix, I believe. And they're, the people are, and we've seen lots of movies like this, and they're standing there watching the volcano erupt. They're just frozen in fear. And we're like, run, run. <laughs> Why aren't they running? <laughs> Why is it the audience always knows first when it's time to run? How does well, that work? That's called the movies. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> viewers get the cinematic Hollywood advantage. <laughs> when you're in the real world, you don't have that. But a lot of people freeze. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Right. So, you know, for today, before we talk about healing these tentacles, let's first talk about how woods deal with their heart pain. Yes, if we must. You, can you tell I'm trying to avoid this? <laughs> We're like nine minutes in, we haven't started yet. <laughs> Maybe that's a tentacle. <laughs> All right. Well, any elemental type can be dealing with any one of these eight tentacles, and the wood element is going to see the world with the lens of their woodness, which means they're going to look at the world in a very specific way. And that's why naming these tentacles really helps. And also, we need to remember you're more than just one element. So even if you're wood second or third, this episode could apply to your third position. The third element can be the element that's giving you the most heart pains. And remember, you don't always get the rock star first, you get the 
kind of yeah. challenging side of each element. Yes. Sometimes, but not always Correct. is it going to Correct. have to do with the third. It, can it could be. Well, I be think any for of most of this, it's one or two, right. and then maybe the third. Two. Right. You'll know if it's bringing you down. So if you've got wood anywhere in your top three in your stack up, then this is for you. And here it is. Woods are going to be more likely than other elements to have issues of deep-seated anger and ego slash pride. So those are the tentacles that really show up for wood people a lot. And we're going to explain them, why that is. Yeah, anger makes sense because woods naturally get frustrated when things don't go quite their way. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much all the time. Yeah. So and that's, some are in better like yeah. control of that than others. Yeah. So that's why we just don't call that tentacle just anger. We call it deep-seated anger because there is a difference between just being frustrated or angry, which is a natural emotion for wood, versus, well, wood is the change agent of the world, you know, which is a beautiful thing. Anger is what gets them to make the change. So in order to be this amazing change agent, wood has to get annoyed with yeah, they things. get frustrated and they're like, I think I can do this better yeah, or faster or smarter. Exactly. And sometimes they're right. Right. And sometimes they're not, but yeah. mostly they're right. So, you know, woods are constantly making the world a better place. That's what they do. And that's the wood way. So it's always about finding that better way. That's why woods love gadgets. Yeah. And things and creating and all kinds of stuff. And but they're yes. the inventors of the world. They're the early adopters of any new technology. And they they really always have new ways of thinking. They're constantly inventing better ways to do things. You know, just the other day, I had a practitioner visiting my clinic, and he was watching me do my moxa treatments. Well, I don't know if everyone knows, Lita, that what a moxa treatment is. Good and point. That people come from all over the world to practice with you. I'm yes. Just throwing that out there. Yes. So you just didn't wander in off the street and say, hey, what are you doing? Yeah, there you go. So, yes, I get a lot of visitors. And so moxa bustion is a Chinese medicine technique of burning herbs on acupoints, and in this case, an herb called mugwort or Artemisia vulgaris. So you take a little bit of this dried herb, you stick it on a point, you light it, and then just before it gets close enough to the skin that the person feels the heat, then you pluck it off. So it's a deep penetrating warmth into acupoints, and that's what we call moxibustion. How's that, Jay? That's pretty good. I have it all the time, and I love it. I hated it at first. Just right. couldn't stand it, and now I just can't live without it. Yeah, so I'm doing this moxibustion treatment. Back to my story. Yes, <laughs> and I'm I still use still avoiding the emotions here. Yes, oh, that's what you're doing. You get me talking, and I use this little sticky stuff, which is usually chapstick, to stick the herb onto a point. And every time I have to pick up the chapstick, dab a little bit on my finger, then dab it onto the herb before placing it on the point. And my visitor, who happens to be wood, watches this, and after the the client leaves, he comes over with his invention. He found something that would hold up my chapstick so that I wouldn't have to keep picking it of up course. to apply it, right? <laughs> so technically, I could save time by standing the stick straight up. Granted, it would only be a split second or less. But it would make it more efficient on some Grand level. Yes. Every split second of time saved doing manual tasks that don't really ma matter is a win for wood people. And a win-win for everyone. Right? Yes. It's just crazy. Yeah, as a wood person, I do maybe have a penchant for kitchen gadgets. Yes. I mean, do I really need the avocado slicer, the garlic peeler, the little gadget I got that you put on the edge of your teacup so you're tea string bag doesn't fall in the water so you don't have to fish it out. I mean, I don't know. I could go on actually. That's just a couple. But is it really? That's important to me. It's kind of fun too. Who's? It's not boring. I'd say all those things are not necessary unless you need to shave seconds off your kitchen prep time. Or have fun. Right, that, right, I mean, maybe it's kind of fun sometimes. Yes. Like, yes. where's the avocado slicer? <laughs> sometimes it's annoying. I and know. you know, your tea bag little doohickey falls in your tea. That's really frustrating. Yes, you have to fish it out. Yeah, the string and the tab so, and all that stuff. So, so it yeah. saves on frustration too. Yes. And let's throw in another pop culture reference since we've already did the the Celine Dion and the yes. Titanic. So we're watching the new Top Gun Maverick movie, which is like wood on testosterone now, yes, right? And they, yes. they, so they have this one scene and there's three minutes to bomb the target and they have to trim it down to two minutes and 15 seconds. It's life or death. Of course, it's Hollywood. And they need to find the most efficient ways to do that, right? So they're like, ah, it's like so much drama. And that's how it feels, Lita, for wood people, but maybe yeah. not so 
beautifully lit and cinematically perfect. And there's not always a music score in the background. But, <laughs> but you is, wish it was. Right, totally. In my mind there is, right? I mean, I hear those those horns and stuff. But, and you know, Top Gun right now is the ultimate new, uh, new, newish wood movie. It's still out there, right? Yeah, I agree. My favorite part is when Tom Cruise is sitting in the cockpit and everyone is rushing around him, getting him ready to go. And he's sitting there in the zone, just totally concentrating on what he's about to do. And that's what every wood person is aiming for in life, to be able to get to do something so great that all the wood person's minions are working together to help that wood person achieve this monumental goal. Some type of Herculean task that they're brave enough to do and capable of doing, but most importantly, will benefit all of us. Yes. No wonder we like wearing that superhero cape. No wonder. Oh, fashion there moment. we go. And just for those listeners who are like super dirty like us, Tom Cruise is wood in real life and plays that character yeah. in as wood as well. So it's a wood wood. We've also mentioned before that a lot of the wood, big wood Hollywood movies are played by actors that are wood. So yeah. are they really acting? Well, maybe. <laughs> Good point. All right. Good and they're point. just like, woo, let's go. Um, yeah. But would it be fair to say that all woods just love being superheroes? Yeah. That's kind of your dream. We just don't all have capes yeah. <laughs> that we wear in public. <laughs> Okay. So the truth is woods are superheroes. And that's another thing I wanted to bring up. It's not just about anger and frustration, but this is where the ego pride tentacle comes into play because woods know this fact about themselves. Like they have this, they have these capabilities other people don't have. They know that when push comes to shove, they're going to be the ones that saves everyone else's butts. Yeah, and hopefully they're in a good place and they don't do it in a conceited kind of way. They just do it for the greater good, the win-win. They try to, you know, make everyone feel good as everything happens in a good way. Then that's what in a good place, you yes. know. Um, so our listeners may be wondering why, why that is. Sure, do tell. So the reason Woods are so capable is because well, first, that's their job in the universe. And secondly, or more on a mechanical level, their brains work differently than the rest of ours. They are super fast thinkers, and they have what we call street smarts. They might also be super intelligent in other ways, but almost all woods have an uncanny ability to very, very quickly assess a situation and know exactly what to do. So it's like that Titanic movie again when Leonardo DiCaprio's character makes sure they're the very last ones to hit that cold water. Like he thought it through. He made he had a strategy. He had a strategy. Even though he is not wood and the character, hmm, maybe watery. Yeah. Maybe water wood. Right. Yeah. Because he knows their only chance of survival is as little time in the cold water as possible. So even when people are jumping off the boat, he makes sure they're the very last ones yeah, to hit that cold water. Yeah, they go to the top water. of the thing. They get on yeah. the other side of the railing. Right. They wait, wait, wait. He tells her what, don't go until like a, you yes. know, like, then they get on the little board, the little door, which by the way, Leah, I don't know if there's a whole thing. Do you know that there's a whole thing about her being on the door and him not being on the door? No. On the edge? Oh, it's hysterical. So there's a whole group of people out there who have seen the movie in the last, I don't know, 20 or 30 years. I don't even know how old. It's like 20 something, right? Yeah. And so they're like, why didn't they both get on the door? Why didn't they both, you know, survive? Yeah. And so James Cameron, who is Wood, by the way, had to do a whole thing on explaining. He had scientists come in and measure, measure the weight of the board with one body versus two bodies with the conditions. And would it actually have held two people? And he said, no, it would not have. Ah. So people are like, why didn't she let him on? Why didn't they take turns? Why didn't like, so it's so crazy how people really got into that whole last scene of this, but it was about strategy. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it's really about optimal circumstances for survival at oh, all times. I like times. that. Optical circumstances. I can't even say it. <laughs> optimal circumstances. I really like that. Optical <laughs> circumstances for survival <laughs> at all times. Not optical. That's vision. Optimal. <laughs> okay, there well, you go. <laughs> there you go. So woods are really good at this and they can just figure things out because of these minds that are constantly calculating odds and possible outcomes. And in addition to the street smarts, they also have another advantage over the rest of us. And that's what Jay and I call the Oracle. Yes. The famous Oracle as, as we always talk about. But before we go there, Lita, I just want to say they're not always right. And yeah. they don't have to be, but they are really good decision makers. Yeah. So sometimes a decision is better than no decision. Yes. 
in many cases, right. like water people have a really tough time making so a decision. So if they had, if they were in Titanic and they were going through that motion that we were talking about, and they had an ongoing conversation about where to run, where to go, what to do, that just would not have worked. Right. They had to just time. do it. They had to just do it. Yeah. Take a strategy and go and then see what happens. Yes. Yeah. All right. So back to the Oracle. Well, Sorry. the Oracle <laughs> is this idea that would seem to have this equally uncanny ability to know the future. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. They just <laughs> see down the road and see the outcome. You, oh, yeah. I get it. <laughs> Joking. <laughs> All right. You saw that future coming. Yeah. They just can see. Wah, wah, da- wah, wah, wah. Wah. They can just see down the road and see the outcomes. And that's what's going to happen. And they know it. Yeah. We don't even really think about it. Like you don't walk around all day going, oh, I'm the Oracle. It just comes. We just do it. We may be trying to explain to someone or everyone why something is about to happen is really a bad idea. Again, I'm doing a lot of air quotes today because maybe we can see the mistakes before they're happening. Maybe it's a little bit of the Oracle. Right. Like, you know, they made a lot of mistakes on the Titanic. Oh, this is the show, the Titanic. Yes. (laughs) We will just name this show my heart will go on and all the Titanic fans will go, yay! <laughs> yes. Okay. So what were the mistakes in the Titanic? Mistake number one. Go would... slow or you're going to hit an iceberg. They gave plenty of warnings. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mistake number two. Bring your binoculars. Okay. <laughs> Don't go on watch without your binoculars. <laughs> yeah. That guy said, where's the binoculars? Oh, we left them back somewhere else. <laughs> okay. No, have w- more than one pair of binoculars on a <laughs> giant boat going out through the icebergs. Okay. <laughs> Mistake number three. Don't ever get on a boat that doesn't have enough lifeboats for everyone. <laughs> okay. Doesn't this seem silly now? Like, right? Right? I know. Like we're looking at this and it's, oh. you know, such a sad tragedy. It yes. really, 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 really was. <laughs> um, but but especially for Wood, because if you get in a boat that only has half of the lifeboats, you're going to need to be the hero and save everyone right. else. And that's a no-win situation. Right. That, that's kind of what happened as that's you what can happened. see it unfold. But um, yeah, I mean, those are just some, you know, if you're going to go on a cruise in the next year or so. Just think Count of those. The life that's boats. right, right, and you know, bring some binoculars in case they forget there. So whatever. Just saying. Just saying. So we have these natural abilities that are wood, and they're you know the good parts of wood, and even this inherent frustration can make things better all the time. So this natural tendency to see the future outcomes to help steer people to make better decisions. Yay, this is wood, wood. and you can yeah. wood. remember all five elements. Uh, so you have wood in you somewhere. Unless it's like fifth, like me, and then it's pretty <laughs> pathetic. But anyway, but you do have wood moments. I do. I can do. I wood. remember that day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but here's where it gets tricky for woods. All right. Nah, nah, nah. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> when things don't go woods way, and really bad things happen, then a couple of things can happen as a result. First, they can begin to develop deep-seated anger. Which we see in a lot of people. Yes. And this isn't just a little frustration. Now it's bitterness or even hatred of people or certain kinds of people. Yes. And maybe like sometimes would people get a little, uh, they lose their patience with maybe people who aren't making super intelligent choices. (laughs) Yes. Yes. That's a very nice way to put that, Jay. (laughs) And this is where the ego comes into play. So maybe if a wood person experiences trauma, what is the story they're going to tell? What is the tentacle that we want to talk about that gets wrapped around their hearts? They're going to review that trauma over and over again and think about how it could have been done differently and what they could have done differently. And most of the time, they're going to be mad because they can often walk it back to someone else's bad decision. Or our own bad decisions on some cases, which may they might not want to admit. Or now, how is this different from the Earth going around and around and around of thinking. Well, Earth anger is more like resentment that sort of simmers at the lower level. I don't think it's as conscious as. And what about the metal where they just stuff it, stuff it, stuff it, stuff it? it. Yeah, and then they they blow up. Yeah, yeah. So see, all the elements have something when they're not in harmony with themselves. Yeah. So it's going to be about anger, anger at the stupidity of a bad choice that caused a horrible outcome. And that anger gets lodged deep inside and becomes that tentacle wrapped around the heart. And I just want to say for clarity, she didn't mean stupidity. She meant the lower intelligence choice. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> That's your benevolence, Jay. Right. Jay's trying to be very... Now, you, <laughs> that means you now operate all the time worried about the less intelligence decisions of other people 
in general making similar mistakes. And that's what makes wood people kind of grumpy and maybe a little short, like yeah. with their answers or their responses. And that could be frustration. And yeah. that could be frustrating for those around a wood person who's not in harmony. So you can really see how these two tentacles often go hand in hand. A feeling like, you you know, there's like ego there. I know better. I can do better than you. So needing to be maybe a little overly controlling and micromanaging everyone because they can't do it right themselves and this underlying anger being the other tentacle that could make them super duper grumpy. So you grumpy. mean tentacle and tentacle because tentacles don't really have hands. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go tentacle in uh, holding tentacle, another, another tentacle. tentacle. There yes. you go. Yes. So. Just for the visual listeners out there. <laughs> so the second one, the, the anger makes them super duper grumpy. And, you know, let me make another reference to an old movie. Brad- Please not James Cameron, <laughs> Titanic. I don't think okay, so, right. no. This is Bradley Cooper in Chef. And he's like a powder keg in that movie. He's just constantly blowing up at people and telling them how stupid they are. His tantrum seems so silly from the outside if you're watching him, but he's just operating without a choice because he has this tentacle. Even if he wants to be nice, that anger, that deep-seated anger is just adding fuel to the fire all the it's time. It's like that jet fuel to that fire because things aren't going exactly the way he wants it. He's in like maybe the wu way, he's in the zone, and something rips him out of that zone and he's like pissed. Yeah, and he yeah. just erupts. It's right. just reaction and there's no... He can't control it. Yeah. Not one of my favorite movies, but yeah. it's okay. Because you didn't want to see a wood person behave no, like that. it's not. It's, I mean, we, we watch a lot of movies, but, you know, De Niro movies and all kinds of movies where they're just like, ah, yes. you know. Yes. Not so, fun to watch. But you feel the passion. And then you, they're usually a good guy or a good woman and they turn it around. But, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so that's deep seated anger. And now let's talk about greed. Because if we add that tentacle to the list of common wood tentacles, um, it's a tricky one because obviously the wealth palace is a wood palace. So it would stand to reason that wood people might get greedy all the time. Well, I would say that from my experience, they definitely like having a lot of money and what comes with that. The perception yes. that a lot of money or accumulation means that you're great. Yes, because so that's what wood wants, right, to be see great. That in a, and we live in a wood culture, and you can see that in other wood countries, how that is, and it's not, again, not necessarily the right thing, air quotes, but right. it's that that feeling, that drive. And they often hate to be unfair. So greed is often based on taking advantage of those who are disadvantaged in some way to for financial gain. And so, they might also share the wealth with those around yes. them, even if it comes from a different way. So, in fact, the benevolence of wood people often means they involve themselves in money-making schemes that they think will help others, Yeah, right? So while maybe greed is not perhaps the driving force of it, and it may not be a tentacle leader, they just may be that they're trying to fulfill their wealth palace, their abundance palace of making money. And that could be that kind of thing. Yeah. And it doesn't even have to do with past trauma. It's just them being wood. I guess it is if the palace is out of balance or not. Yes, exactly. And if it's done with a really calm, beautiful kind of heart, open yes. heart, authentic. Yes. Yeah. So we're talking about the tentacles around a person's heart that makes them not feel free. So greed in the sense of a tentacle is more likely to occur in some of the other elemental types who aren't wood, who can't seem to succeed in their wealth palace. It's easier for woods to succeed in their wealth palace. But these other elemental types, sometimes they resort to cheating in some way to get ahead. And I'd also say really quick that if you have wood third, the this palace could be a challenge for you. Yeah. And so you get some of the, the things that we're talking about. And you know, wood people typically don't like to cheat. They don't like cheaters. They like fairness. They like to follow the rules-ish, maybe not so much as metal, but like to bend them a little bit. But they like the rules because it has fairness and there's an even playing field. And so that doesn't mean they'll never cheat or bend the rules, but they somehow rationalize that because it's okay, because then it will help someone in need. Yeah. And in all cases, any elemental type might have one of the tentacles we identified. We're just talking about typical scenarios. And it's probably less likely that would people have heart pains around a feeling of greed. Instead, let's say someone steals their money, they might be really focused on getting more money if they lost their money, and that might look greedy, 
But the feeling inside them is more probably that deep-seated anger. And it could be connected to betrayal. Yeah. You know, and or that, unfairness. Right. And that fierceness would power them to make changes to increase their wealth palace again. Yeah, that's a nice distinction. I like that. So the next question, the one you're all waiting for, is what do you do about these tentacles if you're wood? These tentacles holding another tentacle? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I don't know. What's the answer, Lita? So we call this freeing your heart. And it's a meditation you can practice. Before you begin, you identify something in your life where this tentacle is showing up currently. And so you could do it could be multiple. It could be like little columns or yeah. make a list because wood like lists. And, yeah, okay, there you go. So it could be if you're wood and you do think maybe you have some of this deep-seated anger or this prideful feeling like you know better than everyone else. Think about where that's showing up in your life. Think about a specific example. Or someone that makes you feel that way or a situation that it arises more frequently at work or in a community activity. Now in the meditation, begin thinking about the episode and replay it in your mind. Then after you get the feeling of what it's about, begin to go backwards in time and think about all the other times you had similar feelings come into your mind and keep going backwards linearly in time, finding each instance where you felt the same way until you get back to what you think is the very first time you felt that way. And this could take like a week. It's not mm -hmm. something you're probably not going to get to in one day. So I always say like have a journal or paper around to kind of track it. It's likely going to be some traumatic event, some life-changing event that made you see the world differently completely like than before. And it could be a parent that criticized you. It could be a sibling that challenged you and it didn't go well. It could be so many things, but keep going back until you find that moment where you're all of a sudden, the way you were is now changed or different because of someone or something. And that's with all the elements, but for this particular one, it's a wood, we're working on the wood. Right. So when you get to that first instance, that traumatic event, now take a few minutes and rewrite in your mind how that event happened. You get to rewrite it any way you want. If you want to imagine a little purple wood elf coming in with purple ray guns and shooting the bad guys, that's fine, you know? Or you can imagine that you have a purple ray gun in your pocket and you have it inside, tucked inside your pocket of your cape. And then you come out like a superhero. <laughs> there you go. What was that cartoon, uh, The Incredibles, Never Wear a Cape? Right? Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason for that, but no. Um, oh, so, so you could just have that in your pocket, okay? Or something more realistic, like one of your parents apologizing sincerely to you. Whatever it is, you get to creatively control how to fix this situation. And they might have to tap it a little bit to your fire because they have a very good imagination. Yes. You know, and just see if you can rewrite this in a way that's a win-win. Yes. So once you imagine this positive outcome, now you go forward. You imagine what would happen it, now that this new outcome happened, how would all the other instances of these tentacles in your life be if, as you move forward in time? So this time, as you think about each incidence where you felt that bad tentacle feeling, now bring this new insight as if the bad thing never happened. And then you can maybe apply that to see if your whole life would be different without that story, without that baggage, without that initial bad feeling ever happening to you. And you come all the way back to the present, and then it's the one that you started with, and you see... Are you different now? Yeah, I've done this many, many times and I love it. And I know it sounds complicated. So Lita, is it in the Alchemy Learning Center? Yes, we recorded this meditation. It's called Free Your Heart. And it's in the second stages of alchemy meditation, the second stage of alchemy. And you must have your own purple ray gun because we do not provide them. <laughs> we do not. Nor do we provide the superhero cape. <laughs> right. So that's at alchemylearningcenter.com. Now, Jay, so if you do this meditation a number of times and really focus as a wood person on the anger or the pride that you might be feeling, what should begin to happen is that you can begin to trust that people may not do things the way you would want them to do, and that's okay. And it's even okay for them to make mistakes. And even for you to foresee those mistakes and then not feel compelled to stop them before they happen. Or yell at people or scream at them or have a temper, temper tantrum. I mean, that's really hard for Wood, who's at sometimes at a high level. But, you know, I like to say to some of my Wood clients, you know, 
don't tell them what to do unless they've asked for your advice. Would always think they know better than everyone else. And you know what? That's just, you know, their ego talking. But if you're having a conversation with someone and you always try to fix their problems, answer their questions or do whatever without them even asking, I always say, just listen. If the last thing of that sentence is not, what do you think, Lita? Yeah. Or what can, what, what's your opinion, Lita? Yeah. And I'm just using Lita. Very good <laughs> listener. But, um, and, and so if that's the case, don't say anything in that moment. It's yeah. a challenge. Yeah. Because people need to learn on their own and many are adverse to being told what to do. So it just makes them annoyed with you anyway. Yeah, we do a uh, practice on this, uh, in the learning center when, with our map people and yeah. it's really powerful. And yeah. it, the wood people could struggle, but it's yeah. great. It's so good for the ego. Right. And and that's really what you're trying to do is you're trying to help them with your ego pride tentacle when in fact they really just need to start to be okay with, you know, other people can't always do it the right way. And right. that's okay. Right. And, you know, wood is the master delegator. So it's not an, it's not hard once you get the hang of it. Right. So, I mean, I think that it's just they sometimes you have to you know, stop the story, as you like to say, yeah. and what is the re rewriting the story? And it's just a way to empower people, I think. Right. Let other people do things slightly different. So the other thing we're hoping is you'll see a change in that the anger is not being triggered as much. Once you can heal that initial story that fuels all your anger, when people do make mistakes, you can see it as their journey and they have they have to make those mistakes to learn, like we said. Right. And they you, they might in the past have seen giant and big, but in retrospect, it's not a big deal. Right. Like it, it's much smaller. You and can allow less adequate ways to exist. The world will not tip <laughs> off its axis, like I said before. Right. Ultimately, the wood person has to learn how to give up control. And you don't need to control everything to survive. And and that's really what fuels it. And really, you can't control other people. So focus on what you can control yourself. Well, and what I can control right now is that's about it for this podcast today. <laughs> <laughs> so for your homework this week, if you choose to accept it, you can play around with the Free Your Heart meditation. And actually, any of the element types can do it. It's not specifically for wood. And so go in your closet, see if you have a superhero cape in there <laughs> and put it on and Channel your inner Celine Dion and have a wonderful week. And your heart will go on and on. Right. And if you haven't seen Titanic, definitely set aside four hours and <laughs> yeah, go watch right. it. <laughs> and next episode, we're going to be talking about fire. Fire and how they might get their tentacles wrapped around their heart. Yeah. All right. So, all right. Have a great week. Okay. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Inspired Action Podcast and you've reached the end. Woohoo. Woo why not celebrate a little bit and click that subscribe button right there. We love having you with us on this journey and we want it to continue. You can also rate and review this podcast. And if you have already, thank you so much. We read all reviews and your reviews help other people find this podcast as well. You can also be a part of this podcast yourself by submitting a voice recording message and emailing it to us at Lita at InspiredActionPodcast.com or Jay at InspiredActionPodcast.com. And if you want, you can join our Facebook group or follow us on Instagram. Join us next week for another Inspired Action Conversation. And thank you for listening. Thanks for listening. And remember to hug the dog. <laughs>